Welcome to a very special episode of Wisconsin Food. Today, we've brought in three amazing chefs and given them this challenge. They get $60, 60 minutes, and the entire Dane County Farmer's Market to shop for ingredients to prepare one dish that tells their story through food. Let's do it. Good luck. They grow up so fast. I know, it's so exciting, isn't it? <laughs> I'll be able to walk into that farmer's market and be like, okay, let's see what we got today and hopefully put something together that's gonna blow the judges away. I'm still thinking, why did you ask me to do this? Like, you couldn't find another sh real chef or something? Who knows what I'm gonna come up with or if it's all gonna go together. I know I'll make it delicious, though. Where are we gonna cook these things at? Oh, we're gonna cook it at La Toile, like, you know, the James Beard-nominated restaurant. Uh, uh, okay. And the time starts now. All right, this is about to get crazy. This could be good or bad. I'm not really good at writing stuff down, and then I just kind of decipher as I go. It's all muscle memory? Muscle memory and instinct. Oh, man, I can't wait. I'm a little concerned that Tariq has only been chopping chilies for the last 45 minutes, so I think our dish is gonna be pretty hot. <laughs> okay, chefs, you have five minutes left. Let's think about it. Chef Lauren. Yeah, yeah, I heard you. <laughs> Coming in with beans. 10 seconds. What? It's actually 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, you guys are terrible. Two, one. And that's it. I don't know what to expect. I don't either. And that's kind of the best part. I'm gonna go straight Neanderthal on this thing. Oh, it's such a good bite. But it can only be one favorite. We are a collection of the finest farmers, food producers, and chefs on the planet. We are a merging of cultures and ideas shaped by this land. We are a gathering of the waters, and together, we shape a new identity to carry us into the future. We are storytellers. We are Wisconsin Foodie. Welcome to a very special episode of Wisconsin Foodie. Today, I'm standing in the La Toile Dining Room, one of the most accomplished restaurants in the entire state. And behind me is the capital of Wisconsin, home to the Dane County Farmer's Market. The Dane County Farmer's Market is the largest and one of the most diverse markets in the entire country. And today, we've brought in three amazing chefs and given them this challenge. They get $60, 60 minutes, and the entire Dane County Farmer's Market to shop for ingredients to prepare one dish that tells their story through food. The dishes will be judged by myself and James Beard winning chef, Tori Miller. Let's meet the contestants. My name is Gregory Leon, and I'm the chef and owner of Amalinda, a small independently owned Spanish and Portuguese inspired restaurant in downtown Milwaukee. So Amalinda um, has been around for six years, started off as a pop-up restaurant. It's a place that when I think of it, I think of it as a place that's full of joy and happiness, and it's a, it's a labor of love. One of the best things about cooking here in Wisconsin is the fact that we are able to connect with so many amazing farmers, and it's just a great feeling to have them show up once a week with these boxes of amazing produce, and then we just kind of open the boxes and decide, what are we going to do this week? You know, one of the things I love about owning a restaurant is being able to bring a little bit of joy and happiness to the people who come and visit us. Um, and it's nice to see that we can, for maybe an hour and a half of their day, uh, make them a little bit happier, hopefully help them forget about whatever bad things that happened to them during the day, and, and just bring them a little bit of joy. My first memories of cooking involved my family. Um, I come from a Jewish and Hispanic background. And so you couldn't get four family members together without it either being in the kitchen or around the table eating. Um, so my earliest memories of food uh, involved me actually with my family eating and, and watching my grandmothers and my parents cook. So growing up in Venezuela, um, it, it was an amazing experience. It's an experience. I didn't realize it was an amazing experience until many years later after I'd moved back to the U.S. and was an adult and I looked back and realize how lucky I was to have grown up in a different culture, in a different country, and be exposed to amazing different foods. On a daily basis, we just kind of look and see what we have either in the pantry or the cooler, or again, what the farmers have brought us. And so I will probably zero in on one ingredient and then be like, okay, what can I do with this? So right now I have in the oven some 
acorn squash roasting that we got from Amy's Acres yesterday, and that's gonna be uh, the base for the chicken dish today. So then I'll start to think about what goes well with acorn squash, and then start building from there. So the chicken will be roasted, the sauce will be a uh, base of honey and paprika, um, and then we'll just kind of build upon that. My name is Lauren Montalbano. I am a plant-based chef here in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm also a holistic nutritionist and event and retreat caterer. We do also a meal program uh, that cranks out anywhere from 80 to 150 meals a week and disperses them through the greater Madison and also Delafield areas of Wisconsin. So today, my assistant and I are making 130 meals. So this is a grain salad. So we've got red rice, quinoa, lentils, wild rice, diced apricots, cranberries, toasted walnuts, kale, and then a rosemary vinaigrette. So it's really celebrating the season of fall. I am vegan or plant-based, however you want to say it. Um, I have been vegetarian since I was 18 and then vegan for the past eight years. That's kind of, you know, it's been an evolution and a journey for me. I do it for animal rights, but also through that I found out how much better I felt when I cut out the dairy uh, in the meat. And so for me, I feel the most vital while I'm eating that diet and have kind of cured some other health problems with that as well. And so now I love to help other people do the same thing. I grew up in a big Italian family, but food was always a big part of me growing up. Uh, however, my mom always used to kick me out of the kitchen. My family would be like, oh, you're in the way, you're in the way. So as a rebellious person, I needed to find my way to get into a kitchen. I actually started off my career in fashion, completely different from food. And after kind of taking a sabbatical and living in Australia for a year, uh, working on farms and cooking, uh, my aha moment, I was farming and I grew my first potatoes start to finish and then prepared them for the family I was living with. And it just felt so good that I wanted that all the time. So immediately, I knew I wanted to be a chef after that. I'm Tariq Moody. I am currently now the program director for an upcoming news station for Radio Milwaukee. Well, my love of sake actually began way back, uh, shortly after college when I first had sushi and I was introduced to sake. And I was just like, what is this? This is just so beautiful. Throughout the years, I joked, maybe I should have my own sake brewery. It's just a joke. And then like, even when I lived in Minneapolis, I DJed at a sushi place called Fujiya. I DJed there not just for the money, for the free sake. So every sake taste I want to try to pair with a uh, diverse place, but also different foods that most people don't eat sake with. The whole goal is like to take sake out of the world of sushi in Japanese restaurants, you know. I'm trying to take sake into places where most people don't think sake is. And, and so we had pie, so we paired, like, we had a sweet potato pie, we had a blueberry pie, and a key lime pie, and I paired the sakes. Those pairs are more subjective than more logical. So the first one, again, it's uh, my, my favorite one. It's the Oze Rose Jumai Daiginjo. Uh, has uh, tasting notes of grapefruit, cranberries, strawberries. I taste a lot of strawberries in it. Uh, the first thing you're gonna do, just like any wine, take a sniff. Well, growing up, I was a weird kid. I was always, I'm still a weird kid. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Um, I remember asking for an easy bake oven for Christmas. And my dad, like, you know, this is back in the day when like gender roles were a thing, like a thing, like, you ain't getting an easy bake oven. That's for girls. And like, but it's an oven. I want to learn to cook. Like, you won't let me cook. This is when I was little. You won't let me use a real oven. <laughs> but I always watched my mom and dad. My dad had a specialty, my grandma. Just watching them in the, and just watching them work in the kitchen just moved me, and I, and I wanted to do that. That's how the cooking started, and every, and then I just wanted to learn more and more. It became like this meditative thing for me. You know, I think the fact that we're constantly evolving our dishes here at Amalinda and changing our menu on a regular basis, probably more than most restaurants do, I think that's going to give me a little bit of an edge. Um, I'll be able to walk into that farmer's market and be like, okay, let's see what we got today and hopefully put something together that's going to blow the judges away.
Like I'm just literally going to show up, see what the farmer's market has and just kind of let the ingredients guide me towards where I need to be. So coming into this challenge, it's going to be, uh, it's sort of intimidating, uh, honestly, coming in and uh, cooking for Tori Miller and cooking for Luke. And uh, some people might say it's a disadvantage to be preparing vegan food, but I have such fresh ingredients to work with that I'm really excited to just showcase all of those ingredients. And I love to cook with color and I love to cook with texture. So I want somebody to take a fork full of that dish and just have like fireworks in your mouth. My self-confidence is very, very low right now, to be honest with you. Like, I'm still thinking, why did you ask me to do this? Like, you couldn't find another sh real chef or something? I'm just, I'm just like, and then, oh, oh, where are we gonna cook these things at? Oh, we're gonna cook it at La Toile, like, you know, the James Beard dominated restaurant. Uh, uh, okay, cool. So, yeah, my head, my head is not in the right space right now. I'm excited, but I did look at like bus schedules <laughs> to go back. Welcome, chefs. You are in the most amazing place in the entire state of Wisconsin to source local and crafted ingredients, the Dane County Farmer's Market in beautiful Madison. Today, we have a special challenge that we'd like to present you with. Myself and Chef Tori Miller from La Toile and Gray's, we are here to provide you with $60 and one hour to explore the Dane County Farmer's Market, the nation's largest producer-only market. And we're going to ask you to create a dish that reflects both you, your cooking sensibilities, sense of style, and of course, the food from these amazing producers. Tori, what do you have for the chefs? Man, I've been coming out here for 18 years because I am that old. If you have any wants or you know specific ingredients or any inspiration, I can definitely let you, you know, point you in the right direction. I'm not here to like give anybody any any cooking pointers, but when it comes to the market, like I definitely know like if you want the best pears, if you want specific varieties of cauliflowers, or if you want specific varieties of greens, all those types of things, we can, I can point you in the right direction and let you know, know where those are. So, at this time, I would like to provide you with the $60 and the directions to go nuts. <laughs> Find yourselves in the farmer's market. And we'll meet back here in one hour and let the cooking competition begin, all right? Then the adventure starts now. This is exciting. I know. Sixty dollars. You guys That'll can. You far. guys can do a lot. Yeah. You can do a lot with that. All right. Let's do it. Good luck. They grow up so fast. I know. It's so exciting, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> All right. Can I get a chilies and the ground cherries? I just saw ground cherries. I had ground cherries the other day, and I was like, I love the flavor. And I see Thai chilies. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with it. Might not use it. I have no idea. But again, thanks for pairing me with chefs, real chefs. Thank you. Thanks. I learned to cook when I was like seven. My grandma, my parents taught me. I wanted to be a chef, but there was no food network at the time, right? So I didn't think it was cool enough to be track girls, so I went to architecture school instead. So I was just close to going to culinary school. Since my best friend is Korean and my goddaughter is Korean, I was like, so it's a mixture of like Korean and uh, soul food. Kind of what I like to cook. Korean and soul food, that's the same food I be cooking. <laughs> <laughs> you got any thoughts so far? The brown cherries and the chilies together somehow. Oh uh, yeah, no, that's a really good idea, man. I have zero ideas. I'm gonna just kind of let the ingredients speak to me. Um, and who knows? what I'm gonna come up with or if it's all gonna go together. Uh, I know I'll make it delicious though, because that's my option. These little eggplants though are looking pretty sexy. I'm gonna take one of these Thai eggplants, please. Those are calling to me. But the problem is that all produce calls to me, so I'm known for, they're just called Lauren piles, <laughs> which is, it sounds really appetizing, but just like massive piles of vegetables. 
just really a lot of robust color and texture. So that's what I'm going for, because that's what I do well. I'm hoping that I have enough money left over for flowers, just because. So it's almost a little overwhelming today. We have so much to pick from. My mind's kind of racing, so we're trying to figure out, you know, our key ingredients and then just narrow it down to one dish. Chef, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, how's the shopping going? So far, so good. Excellent. Yeah. So you're putting together something like, do you, do you walk into this type of uh, experience with a dish in mind, or do you just kind of let the ingredients speak to you? So what we do at the restaurant is our menu constantly evolves. So we just kind of see what the farmers bring us, and then we kind of stand around the boxes and figure out and, and have let the vegetables speak to us. So that's kind of my plan here, just see what we have and, and then go from there. Do you ever feel like when there's so many beautiful ingredients, it's hard to kind of narrow down in your mind like how you want to construct Sometimes, because yeah. you want to use everything. Everything looks so great, and you're like, oh, I want to use everything. And right. So then you have to kind of edit yourself because you don't want to put a lot of stuff on the plate. Oh, I know, I know. Deliberate, intentional food uh, made with love and care. Is I know it's the, it's the hallmark of your restaurant. Thank and you. uh, yeah, I can't wait to see what you crank out here, man. I'm excited. I'm missing those mushrooms you said. Shrimp of the woods. Have you ever had that? No. They look funky. Really? And they, they actually do have like a real shrimpy texture, like when you really? cook them. This is the shrimp of the woods. Oh, wow. And I don't know if you ever cooked with these, but they're delicious if you're, if, if you're into that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. All right, money's money. I know they said $60 was gonna go really far, but not if you buy every single ingredient that you see. I've been through just one little bit, but since I don't use meat and I don't use cheese, that cancels out definitely some of the vendors here for me but I think that it really gives me an edge because that is my world. All of these vegetables, I have cooked in so many different ways and it gives me a ton to work with because that's my main focus. So I'm gonna take all of these different textures and different colors and combine them to make something really, really amazing. And look at these beautiful beans. I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these dry beans. Oh, I've got eggplant, I've got Brussels sprouts, I've got broccolini, collini, which I've never used before and I'm really excited to, and this beautiful head of frise and a watermelon radish, and now I've got beans. I don't know what that equates to. Um, fiber, lots of fiber. So check this out. This is the chili place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got the habaneros. Yeah. Can I get um, four scotch bonnets? Do you want to taste one around this spot? No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good for now. Tori, so this is uh, definitely your stomping grounds here. Yeah, man. Tell me what it's like to be able to <laughs> walk around here and see all these purveyors. How, how much does this influence your cuisine? Being able to talk directly to the farmer and to the person that grew the food is like essential to us to like tell the story all the way. I always want to just put the farmer out there and be like, Gen Air Farm made, they grew this awesome kohlrabi and I'm doing this with it. I already know Wisconsin has the best food growing. And that's like real talk. With the terroir we have in the Driftless region, uh, you know, the, the food coming out of the dirt there just tastes better. And that's why our grass tastes better, that's why our cheese tastes better. That's, and then we have these great innovators that are working with affinage and finishing these amazing cheeses. And I'm, I'm not wearing a cheese hat on, but I, I'm, I've always been, you know, just so in love with this state and the people of it. And to me, I love, I love it. I love working here and I love to see it growing. All right, my man. Yeah, buddy. Thank you so much. Yeah, brother. Let's go find these chefs and see what they're up to. <laughs> yeah, How about man. that? I can't wait to see what they do. Yeah, I know, right? So now we're on a mission to find some goat cheese, so hopefully we can find some and some bread. So I'm starting to form an idea of what this dish is going to be like. So let's see what we can find. I'm looking for goat cheese. Goat is right over here. And these are the samples? Yep. So these are all goats? These five right here. These five, okay. These are mixed milk. Right. That one, that one it is. So I think we're gonna go with the Lend Me Your Ear Goat. It's nice and um, it has a little bit of an aged flavor to it. I think it's gonna go really well with the vegetables we've picked up, so thank you very much. We look forward to using it. So we've got rhubarb, radicchio, potatoes, some goat cheese. Now we're gonna grab some bread. 
I need something crusty that I can slice and cook on a grill. What do you have? Thank you. Yeah, have a good one. You too. Uh, Money-wise, I still have 30 bucks. So I've done pretty well. I'm gonna do one more lap, see if I can find one other thing, but I think I'm almost there. I think I'm pretty much done, because I have no idea what this is, but. <laughs> Get back. Put I'm just feeling can. that mushrooms are the main kind of thing. So I'm sitting around everything around mushrooms, I'm guessing. Cause yeah, I'm just looking at those ground cherries and Thai chilies at some kind of sauce. Well, I've got my exercise in, got my footsteps in. Yeah, I got enough money for a beer, so. Hey, if you got money <laughs> left over, don't tell Arthur. Thank you. I'm hoping the ingredients are just gonna kind of talk to me and tell me what they're gonna become. So that's kind of how I cook. I don't get too technical with it. I just let them speak for themselves. So it makes my job really easy. Do you think that any of these vendors will barter with me for flowers? Six dollars each. This is my place. Do I have six dollars? I have seven dollars. This was meant to be. Thank you so much. This is gonna make me happy all day long. Look! If this isn't happiness, I don't know what is. Good morning. I'm putting a dish together in my head. I'll take one of those, please. So now we're getting some ground cherries that my guess will end up being pickled. So I've got some rhubarb, some ground cherries, radicchio. Um, we got some bread. So I'm thinking maybe this is gonna end up being like an open-faced sandwich, perhaps vegetarian. Probably use the potatoes to make an aioli for it. Pickle the ground cherries, the rhubarb. Maybe mix it with the radicchio and the cheese. We'll see. It can all change once I get into the kitchen. Hello. Oh, it's good to see you. Any good apples today? So I got three of the Calvi Blanc. How do you pronounce it? Devere, you're asking. Devere. So one of the great things about coming to a farmer's market is that you get exposed to all sorts of different kinds of produce that you wouldn't normally see in your local grocery store. So right now we just came across a stall that had five different types of radishes. I know it's crazy to get excited about radishes. We all think of those little red things that we see in salad bars, but there's an amazing world of radishes out there. We've got black Spanish, we got two different varieties of daikon, and then we got a watermelon radish, which I think is all gonna add a nice little spiciness to our dish when we get back into the kitchen and start cooking. Luke. How's it going, chef? What does the market do for you? Is it provide a sense of inspiration? Absolutely, it is very stimulating. I mean, I just go in and I see all of the color and all of the texture and all of the possibilities and won't fully kind of actualize them until I have everything spread out. I keep looking into bags to put other things in there and I'm like, oh, I bought that. I totally <laughs> forgot that that was in there. So again, I'm just in, in the mode of being excited. Sure. Uh, and I have no doubt that will translate into a dish. Yeah. But I feel like I've got to walk away because I keep getting excited and I have zero monies. Yeah, that's, that, I mean, I can see where that's a problem. Do you feel at all like maybe you have too many ingredients? Never. Never? No, I have so much color and so much texture. I feel like there might be one ingredient that I just got excited about and I don't know how it's gonna translate. Sure. But I'm gonna work it in and it's not gonna be a problem. However, I feel like I might need your help. Okay. Do you wanna be a mule? Do I wanna be a mule? You mean I'm you need somebody? Yeah. Pass this off. <laughs> exactly. Like, uh, this is the beauty of. Uh, you know, PBS, the, the lack of production assistance. We do all this DIY, so uh, this is my role for the rest of the market. It's I get to gonna be more wash my hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've always wanted a Sherpa. Yeah. Actually, could we maybe dress yeah. you? <laughs> this already feels better to me. I feel lighter. I Thank bet. you. Emotionally and physically. All right. I'm well. ready to cook. I love that I'm not carrying anything. Oh. Hands free, baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you made it. Yeah, I made it. How goes he did, it? He did great. How yeah, are you guys? I'm good. Hey. Yeah. How was the market? It's incredible. Did you so, find some good stuff? Yeah. I'm excited to see Although, what you got. Although, again, I feel bad because I only have one bag. He's got three. She has 12. <laughs> I'm a little I nervous. I bag envy. I'm a little nervous, but we'll see. 
Lauren, talk me through the flowers for a second. They make me happy. They make you happy. Okay. And and what I want I want to bring happiness and joy just everywhere I go, but also while I'm cooking. These are gonna go on my cutting board and they're gonna inspire me. This this will not this will not fit in, in our kitchen. I'm, yeah. I'm telling you that. <laughs> there are no and happiness joy. and joy when no, I'm scared. Oh my god. You heard it here first. <laughs> Tariq, how'd you find the market? Is this your first time at the Dane this County Farmers time, Market? Yeah. Okay. What'd you think? It's nice. It's really nice. It's kinda like I like the variety a lot, you know, the fact they have meats and like all the vegetables and the, the cheese. Is it cheeses or cheese? Plural. I don't know what's we, uh, we what's say, say. We say cheeses. It's cheeses, cheeses. yeah. Yes. All the Thank cheeses. You, cheeses. So I think at this point, should we head into the Latoile kitchen? Yeah. Uh, where We've we had can a, put together? You guys have had one hour to shop and get your brains going, but now it's when the real drama begins. Because you're going to be in my house and I can't wait to see what you guys do, really. This is gonna be so exciting. I don't like drama. You don't like drama? No. Oh, well, you came to the wrong show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Get out of here. Back to the ranch. Oh, yay. Let me get that. Thank you. I don't have any hands for that. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Chef. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Eric Greiling, director of Friends of PBS Wisconsin. Thank you for joining us tonight. We've got Luke Zahm, we've got Tori Miller, we have got three chefs on the loose at the Dane County's Farmer's Market. What's gonna happen next? They've got their ingredients, they're gonna start cooking. This is gonna be pretty fun. We're so excited to bring you this program. This program is all about Wisconsin, from the chefs, from the cuisine they're choosing, from the market, from the farmers behind that market and that food. All of this is so Wisconsin, and we wanna bring this to you. This is what we bring to you, and what we ask for you is your support. Become a member, renew your membership, make an additional gift today. Your support makes this kind of programming possible. We love to bring it to you, and we hope you enjoy it, and we would love to have you take the time today during this brief break from the program to show your support. 1-800-236-3636. Hi, I'm Amy Granger. This culinary adventure is so much fun. I hope you're enjoying it at home. And, and if you um, are inspired to have your own adventure throughout Wisconsin, we have some fantastic gifts when you uh, join, become a sustainer, or give an additional gift this evening. So at $10 per month, we have these great books, Wisconsin Farms and Farmers Markets. It's a beautiful um, guide full of photography of uh, farms and markets all over the state that can inspire your travels. And then a wonderful uh, cookbook from asparagus to zucchini. I love the way this cookbook is laid out because it, it inspires you by ingredient. So if you're looking for a way to use something that you picked up at the farmer's market, you can look it up right here and come up with all kinds of great inspiration. So either of these books or a PBS Wisconsin apron at the $10 per month sustainer level and at $15 per month, we can uh, offer you all three of these items as a thank you gift. So it's a wonderful package. Give us a call at 1-800-236-3636. We're joined by the host of Wisconsin Foodie, Luke Zom. Luke, welcome. Tonight's, uh, tonight's episode of Foodie is quite a bit different from a usual episode of Wisconsin Foodie. What was it like to make tonight's episode? Oh, making this episode was a riot, uh, first and foremost. Uh, to be on the farmer's market or to be at the farmer's market on a Saturday where it's just bustling and all these produce stands and farm stands are full with like the best produce of the season. And then to have three chefs who I respect and admire kind of come together uh, with the help of Tori Miller and walk around and just be able to interact in that whole experience. It was great. Yeah. And Lauren and Tariq and Greg, they're such different kinds of chefs. I mean, what were you guys thinking trying to bring together three so different chefs and have them cook uh, in a competition? You know, one of the things that we talk about all the time on Foodie and we really, really work hard to lift up and dispel the myth actually that Wisconsin is this monoculture, right? Mm -hmm. And we are known for three things and those three things are amazing. Our cheer, che cheese or whatever, uh, cheese, beer and sausage. But beyond that, there are so many cultural warriors and Tariq and Lauren and Greg, they provided us an opportunity to lift those stories up too. 
Yeah, I think you guys did a fantastic job representing Wisconsin in the episode. It's really fun to watch. And the gifts that Amy mentioned, uh, including the, the books, um, a guide to markets and, and, and food across the state, as well as from asparagus to zucchini, one of the best guides to cooking from the farmer's market that I've used, are great ways to continue to explore what it means to be in Wisconsin, to enjoy our culture, to enjoy our food. And one of the best ways you can show your support for that is to become a sustainer, to make a simple ongoing monthly gift that will continue and allow us to plan ahead to bring you programs all about Wisconsin, just like tonight's special episode of Wisconsin Foodie. The way you can become a sustainer to add to your sustaining gift is to go to pbs.org or dial 1-800 Two three six three six three six. Again, these thank you gifts are so much fun. I'm inspired to give a little more so I can take home this package this evening and share it with my family. Um, the Wisconsin Farms and Farmers Markets Guide, it's absolutely fantastic. I didn't realize that Wisconsin ranks number two in the country for organic farms. So, so many profiled in here are ones that I really wanna visit and support. Um, so this is a, an invaluable guide for that. And then this fantastic, uh, cookbook that can inspire you if you're just not sure what to do with an ingredient or you really want to use an ingredient, this will take you there. Um, from asparagus to zucchini, a guide to cooking farm fresh seasonal produce, 420 recipes in this book. And then of course our 100% cotton apron, one size fits all with a nice little uh, uh, pocket in the front. You can uh, receive any of these gifts at $10 per month as a sustainer or all of these gifts, the entire package, at $15 per month as a sustainer. Go online at pbswisconsin.org or call 1-800-236-3636. Like so many of you at home, I grew up watching PBS. It was always telling the stories that enriched my life as a kid. If it was The Electric Company or Mr. Rogers, all those programs were generated and supported by viewers like you. And now it's my job to be able to go around this amazing state, find the best foods, the best artisans, the best chefs, the best farmers, and give them a platform to tell their story. Quite frankly, we are creating identity. So if you support this type of programming and you support the good food movement here in Wisconsin, give us a call at 1-800-236-3636. Thanks, Luke. We have got so many ways to say thank you to you in addition to the gifts that Amy has been letting you know about. And one of those is Airwaves, our monthly program guide. At all of the gift levels that are named today, you can receive Airwaves in your mail and find out what's coming up on Foodie, what's coming up on all of our local programming, and of course, the great national programming that you rely on. We're coming to you on four digital channels and have got all kinds of content that you wanna know about. In addition to that, the PBS Wisconsin app. You can stream all of your favorite programs by going to the app, by, by joining Passport. At every giving level that's listed today, you are eligible for Passport, an even deeper library of content. You can do all of that by dialing 1-800-236-3636. And again, we really want to thank you for your support. If you're already a sustainer or an annual member, thank you so much. You truly make the difference and you make programs like Wisconsin Foodie possible. So if you're already giving, thank you and please consider an additional gift. If this is your first time giving us a call as a sustainer, it's really easy. You call 1-800-236-3636 or you can go online at pbswisconsin.org and take your time looking through these items, um, selecting something as a thank you gift and deciding what level is right for you. So again, we have these two wonderful books, the Farmer's Market Guide and the Cookbook, and also um, the uh, apron as gifts on offer this evening. 1-800-236-3636. We're about to go back to the show. We're gonna rejoin the contest and see what these chefs have in mind for us with their ingredients from the Farmer's Market, see what they can cook up, and then later in the program, we're going to be back with Luke and we're going to find out more about Wisconsin Foodie, about tonight's episode, what's behind it and what's behind uh, the, the rest of, of uh, Wisconsin Foodie. I mean, we, we love having him here in the studio, hearing his passion about Wisconsin food, Wisconsin food producers 
and the culture of the state. Not only where does our food come from, but how much do we care about it? How much, how much is behind that? And that's what we have here too at PBS Wisconsin. How much we care about the state and how much we wanna share with you, the viewers. And you make all of that possible with your membership, with your sustaining gifts. Please show your support by calling us today at 1-800-236-3636. Thanks so much. We are in Latoile's kitchen That's with right. Chef Tori Miller here, and the contestants have brought back what they've purchased at the market. Now, for this challenge, they have one hour to complete a dish that's representative of them as a human and the ingredients that they brought back with them. You provided them with a couple staple ingredients, correct? Exactly, exactly. Just like oil, salt. With Lauren, she had more of a shopping list, but it's fine. Yeah, Lauren definitely had more of a shopping list, that's for sure. She, as we saw at the market, she's a little extra. <laughs> exactly. I have a but, lot of needs. That's right. But if you need less, go someplace else. <laughs> that being said, we have a timer. One hour, one dish, three individual chef contestants. And the time starts now. There's no witty banter happening now. It's just crunch time. All people for themselves. I'm about to cut some ground cherries, put those in the pickled uh, rhubarb, and then start cleaning radishes. What are you thinking for your dish? These are some of my favorite ingredients already, so. So I'm gonna do an open face sandwich, focus on all vegetables and fruit. So we're doing a mixture of apples, rhubarb, some ground cherries, uh, braised radicchio, nice. some dill and aioli, okay, that's gonna have some potato mix oh, into it. Oh, nice. And then we're gonna finish it with an aged goat cheese. Fancy. All right, we'll get to work. It sounds delicious, can't wait. So it's a, a take on a sweet and sour chili sauce. So the sweetness comes from the ground cherries, uh, a little bit of sugar. We have Thai basil, some Thai peppers, scotch bonnets. So a little bit of sweetness, the vinegar, hopefully it reduces down. Then I'm gonna use immersion building to make it a sauce for these shrimp of the wood mushrooms, which hopefully I will be frying later. So Thai eggplant. Thai eggplant. Do you like Thai eggplant? I do. I love it. I think eggplant is a seriously undervalued food. I think a lot of people are turned off by the texture and the flavor, you know, it's not for everybody. Uh, but it also is a really nice canvas to kind of make it taste like what you want it to. Yeah. No, I think it's great. I love Thai eggplant. I love eggplant in general, but um, that sounds really good. Do you have a, an idea for your whole dish? I do. Is it uh, a secret? Chefs love to do the secret thing, it's like, kind of oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do, except you totally like, know. Kinda. And then it's like, you like the big reveal is like, oh, yay. Yeah. Look at what I did. Yeah. So it's ground cherries, rhubarb, and then um, pickling liquid made out of sugar vinegar, salt, and sugar. And then there's a little bit of Spanish olive oil. You cooked with these before? Nope. I'm um, uh, coat these and fry them, and then that's uh, what sauce is for. So I hope it comes out. I have no idea what it's gonna taste like. <laughs> well, I was recommended by uh, Tori over there. Um, he makes a, a, a scampi with it, because it apparently has a kind of a texture like shrimp, and it takes on any flavor you add to it. So I thought I'd make like, like a spicy kind of sweet and sour shrimp dish, shrimp of the wood mushroom dish, vegetarian dish. All right, so I have some brassicas getting ready to roast. I am also going to char some leeks and tomatoes and red peppers for a vinaigrette. So it'll be fun. I've never charred on a French top before, so we're gonna see how that works out for me. All right, in coming with beautiful things. All right, this eggplant. Almost there. We want just a little bit more caramelization on those eggplants. Okay, chefs, you guys have 40 minutes remaining, 40 minutes left to finish your dishes. How are you feeling? Good. <laughs> feeling hot. One good, one hot. <laughs> Tariq, you just making spicy food? Yeah. You're feeling hot too? I'm always hot. You feel good in 40 minutes? I think so. Have you started to think about your plates? What you would like to be plating onto, into? 
So right now I'm cutting uh, all sorts of different types of radishes on a mandolin. So watermelon, green daikon, black Spanish, and purple daikon. All right, this is about to get crazy. This could be good or bad. Putting these little bad boys on here and like praying and hoping that they stay in their homes and they don't run away from me. These tomatoes are really behaving a lot more than I thought they were. I thought they would roll all over the place, but I think they really want me to win. We're working as a team, team veg. Although this is not a meat-centric challenge. There's not a lot of meat involved. But why would you? Like, there's so many good vegetables. Just the sauce, trying to puree it down. Vinegar, sugar, ground cherries, Thai chilies, uh, scotch bonnet, part of scotch bonnet, a little lemon juice, white parts of the scallion. OK, chefs, we are at the halfway mark, halfway point, 30 minutes remaining. How are we feeling? How are those beans? I'm nervous about I'm the beans. I'm nervous about my beans, too. But I'm we're sure not they're going to be delicious. No we're not going to talk about it. We won't talk they're about it. They're going to be good. We just create a little bit of bean drama. I'm dropping the shrimp of the woods mushrooms. It's coated in cornstarch to keep them crispy with the sauce. What am I doing and what's in here, you ask? Well, I'm making my own tahini. <laughs> tahini was not going to be given to me. Chef Tori says, not allowed. But you know what? It's better if you make it yourself anyway. It's got a really nice sesame flavor. How's my sprouties? Oh, yeah. They are looking real good. So the alioli, um, I just added some dill to it. And then I think I'm going to add my potatoes now. That was really good. I know that sounds, I sound surprised. And so we always talk about between like restaurant chefs and home chefs. We always are constantly tasting everything all the time. <laughs> Gotta taste the food. How much time we got? How much time? Uh, I don't know where our clock went. Chefs, we're at 20 minutes. 20 minutes till plates. How we doing? Good. You seem to be as cool as a cucumber over here. Yeah, I just, I came in with a plan. You came in with a plan? I came in with a plan, and I'm just executing my plan. That's the other hallmark, like the, the tasting of food. Tasting of food is like one way that you can always tell the difference between a professional cook and a home cook. The secondary way to tell someone who's a professional versus someone who's kind of moonlighting is when they actually hold tongs. Uh, because if you notice, when Chef Torre picked up the, exactly, it's like two clicks minimum. I can't pick up a pair of tongs and not just like like it's a pair of caracas or whatever. Uh, it's it's definitely part of the game. So when you say you walk into this with a game plan, like do you execute by writing it down or is it just kind of all intuition at this point? Um, it's all intuition. It's usually all in my brain. I'm not really good at writing stuff down. And I just kind of decipher as I go. It's all muscle memory? Muscle memory and instinct. Yep, yep. It's the hallmark of a good chef. Oh, man, I can't wait. Thank, Thank you. you. It's time to make a vinaigrette. Lauren. Hello. How's it going over here? Real good. What part of the process are we in now? We're in sauce land. So right. Sauce land, sauce OK. Sauce land. So um, I've actually done most of my vegetable cookery. Okay. Uh, I've done my grains, holding out for my beans. Um, and now I am just making like my, my base puree and my vinaigrette. Awesome. Throw it all together. Fistful of flowers? No. <laughs> <laughs> done. Done. Chef, what do you see going on here? There's a lot of activity. Man, with like 15 minutes left, I feel pretty good about where everyone's at. I'm a little concerned that Tariq has only been chopping chilies for the last 45 minutes, so I think our dish is gonna be pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm also excited, you know, I, I'm excited to see if those, if those beans get cooked. Mm -hmm. um, and also like to try something vegan and, and see like how, like how an actual vegan chef like puts their dishes together and things like that. Sometimes like when we make vegan food in the restaurant, because like we try to, we do do a, a vegan tasting menu at L'Etoile, and I'm always like self second guessing myself, you know, to be like, 
is a vegan person going to like this? Are they going to like like how this is put together or the textures and things? So I'm really excited to see that. Um, but I think overall it was looking pretty pretty much well handled with 15 minutes left. Ten minutes, chef. Ten minutes. I am ready to start plating. Definitely. With ten minutes left, you definitely want to be plating. Thinking about your plate. I'm pretty much. I've got to do these mushrooms quick, and then I'm ready to plate. Get that nice and hot. I got to check my beans. Ten minutes left. How are you feeling? You feeling good, Tariq? Much better. It smells delicious over here. It smells spicy though. Lion's mane. So these are such a cool mushroom. Again, looking at them, you would not think that they were a fungus, uh, but they are, and they actually do grow here in the state of Wisconsin as well. This is brain food. Look at these little hairs. See all these little hairs right here? This is gonna pick up on that oil, and they will get crispy, crispy and delicious. I'm looking at Chef Lauren's beans here. And I can see that those skins are starting to firm up a little bit. One of the ways in which this could be hastened is if there's like a bouquet of herbs or anything else to weight those beans down in the water as they float. But these are starting to get real close to being done. And the way that you know that a bean is done is when you bite into it and they're creamy. These have just a couple minutes left, but if I was a betting man, I would say these are gonna make it. Yay! Carry on. I'm gonna get a nice little swish. This is our nice creamy bed. Well, next, I'm gonna be pouring the vinaigrette into here. Put that all together. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try some, see how it is, adjust the seasoning. Oh, I could actually use a little more. Okay, chefs, you have five minutes left. Five minutes if it's not on the plate. Let's think about it, Chef Lauren. Yeah, yeah, I heard you. Coming in with beans. And I like to get in with my hands. All right, I'm gonna taste it though, real quick. It's tasting pretty good, honestly. I'm feeling pretty good about it. 10 seconds. Huh? It's actually 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds, you guys are terrible. 30 seconds. You got this, get it on the plate. God, he's yelling at me. So it's just, I want the authentic Latois experience. Uh, I don't. <laughs> Let's go, we got hands coming. 301 needs their food. <laughs> Eight seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that's it. Play. Yay. Finish place, good job. Yeah, good job, everybody. Awesome, awesome. Hi, I'm Eric Greiling, director of Friends of PBS Wisconsin. Thank you for watching tonight. The food has been prepared and we're about to see the reveal. What will the platings look like? How will the judges react? It's pretty fun to watch this and see what people come up with just from the farmer's market and what can they cook in just 60 minutes. But right now, it's a challenge break. This is a great opportunity for you to show your support for this kind of programming on PBS Wisconsin, for PBS Wisconsin, and current members are going to match your membership gift up to $2,000. That's what it means to be a challenge break. So it's a great time to make a call. If you're getting hungry, please make a call first or log on to pbswisconsin.org. Show your support for this kind of programming. Show your support for Wisconsin and make that call today. Call now at 1-800-236-3636. That's right, this is such a great time to call. Not only will your support go further, but you can receive some really fantastic gifts um, as our way of thanking you for your support. So let's go through these again. The Wisconsin Farms and Farmers Markets, this fantastic guide of all of these wonderful farms and markets all over the state that can inspire your culinary travels. Um, and then the uh, cookbook from asparagus to zucchini, 420 really inspiring, fantastic recipes um, that are built off of the ingredient. So if you want to figure out a great way to use oregano, here it is. This is really, really fun. I know I'm going home with one of these. And then the uh, PBS Wisconsin, apron. If you want to uh, think about PBS Wisconsin as you're cooking and be inspired by Wisconsin foodie, 
You can request that gift at $10 per month, any one of these items, or at $15 per month as a sustainer, the entire package, two books and an apron. Give us a call at 1-800-236-3636. Thank you, Amy. It is a challenge break, so it's a great time to make that call. We're joined again by Luke Sam, the host of Wisconsin Foodie. Now, Luke, you and I both come from the Driftless, and I just read a review of the Driftless saying it was boho chic, <laughs> <laughs> which is not a term we'd ever use within the Driftless to describe the Driftless. But tell us a little bit about what it's like to represent the Driftless, represent all the different kind of areas of Wisconsin as you two are being the host of Wisconsin Foodie. Sure. Uh, I think Amy kind of hit one on the head earlier that Wisconsin has the second highest amount of organic farms in the United States. But the thing with the Driftless region, Vernon County specifically, we have the second highest concentration of organic farms in any county in the United States. So I feel like every time I'm in front of a camera, I have this responsibility to lift people up and tell stories that unite us and bring us closer together so we understand what our friends and neighbors and colleagues are doing all over the state so we can come together under that banner of Wisconsin and PBS Wisconsin and celebrate. Yeah, I know when I travel the state, every time I travel, I feel like I'm making new friends, you know, stopping at a cafe, discovering a new place, discovering a new taste, and being with Wisconsin Foodie, with Around the Farm Table, that's a great way to do that every Thursday night. Um, so thank you for all that. And please, if you enjoy this as well, give us a call. It is a challenge break. It's a great time for you to make that call right now. Great time for you to go online and, and, and uh, go ahead and make that gift online if you choose. And while you're there, you can check out our video player, uh, the PBS app. You can download that on your phone, on your tablet. If you have a smart TV, if you have a Roku or a Fire Stick, check out the PBS app. It is there for you to enjoy all of our fabulous content. So make that gift and then stay online and enjoy streaming some of our great programs. Or call us right now at 1-800-236-3636. Well, if you're like me and always looking for a new recipe, this book, which we would love to thank you with when you pledge your support this evening, has so many great ideas. I never know what to do with kohlrabi. I have like 12 new ideas here. So if you're like me and want um, some new inspiration, please give us a call and let us thank you this evening with the Wisconsin Farms and Market Markets Guide and this fantastic asparagus to a zucchini uh, cookbook. The other option, of course, is the PBS Wisconsin apron. It's 100% cotton, it's one size fits all, and it's a lot of fun. So at $10 per month, when you pledge your support, let us thank you with any one of these items. And if you'd like to pledge $15 per month, we'll thank you with all of these items, the entire package uh, for you to keep or to give as a gift. Give us a call at 1-800-236-3636 or pledge online at pbswisconsin.org. Thanks, Amy. This thank you gift will tell you a lot about markets all around the state and great places you can discover um, great food, local food, and, and just dial it in, plan your trip. But Luke, you guys for this episode spent a tremendous amount of time at the Dane County Farmers Market researching it. What did you discover that you didn't know before? What did you share with us that's special about Dane County? Uh, Dane County geographically is the largest farmers market in the nation. So first and foremost, you have this amazing breadth of purveyors and vendors to choose from. But secondarily, like I, I was a chef in Madison for about a decade. And in that process, knowing the market vendors intimately is how you know your food. Learning their stories is how you know this place. And to be able to go through there, meet new vendors, learn new stories, it's ever changing. Just like the programming on PBS Wisconsin, it's constantly sifting and winnowing and re-innovating itself. So it's this great big parable of how we're constantly in motion and what a fun experience it is. Yeah, and if, if you said to somebody like, well, what's one piece of advice you have for somebody going to a market? What do you think that would be? Uh, I know you've got 20, but what's one? The first one, find one ingredient. Find one, take a risk. Find something that maybe you've never used before or you've never seen before. Go to those small, off-the-beaten-path stands. 
talk to a mung grower. Talk to someone that maybe you've never ever had an interaction with and learn the community and the story behind it. Because it's food with story that gives us so much impetus. It gives us so much power and it helps us come closer together with every single bite. And let us help keep bringing that kind of story, that kind of um, um, Wisconsin, that kind of special to you. We need your support to keep doing that. You can show that support by making a simple call today. It's a challenge break. Members will match your gift. Give us a call right now at 1-800-236-3636. We want to get you back to this program. We know we are dying to find out who's the winner of the challenge. But before we do, just one more little recap on these fantastic thank you gifts uh, uh, for this program. When you pledge your support as a sustainer at $10 per month, we'll thank you with either the Wisconsin Farms and Farmers Markets Guide, the Asparagus to Zucchini, uh, cookbook or the PBS Wisconsin apron. When you pledge your support at $15 per month as a sustainer, it's the entire package, two books and the apron um, as special thank you gifts for your support. You can do that by calling 1-800-236-3636 or going online at pbswisconsin.org. And remember, with either of these pledge levels, we'll also send you airwaves each and every month. I can't tell you how much it means to me to be a part of this PBS family. Quite frankly, PBS is in the business of making folk heroes. And while that may seem like a lofty aspiration, I'm telling you that with every single donation, every single pledge, you are empowering producers like me, producers like Around the Farm Table, people who care and have their finger on the pulse of what's happening in this state, you allow us to bring everyone up. It's no surprise that we all do better when we all do better. And your contributions or your ability to call 1-800-236-3636 is unmatched. When you call to support PBS, you are supporting programming that makes a difference. So check us out online, check us out on the phone, and give us a call at 1-800-236-3636. This challenge break is coming to an end and we want you to be our newest member. We want you to join PBS Wisconsin during this Wisconsin foodie break. So give us a call at 1-800-236-36 and become that newest member today. And we can say thank you in so many ways with the book, the cookbook, both books, the apron, and of course, Airwaves um, is available to you, uh, your program guide at every one of those gift levels. And at each of those gift levels, you're eligible for PBS Wisconsin Passport. Deep dive into the video catalog. If you're already watching Netflix or Hulu or another streaming service, you have the technology to download the PBS Wisconsin app to watch PBS Wisconsin. And then if you are a member, if you join today during this challenge break, you can watch Passport for even more content, even more local content. Today is the best day to join. It's a challenge break right now. 1-800-236-3636 is the number to call. We're in the Latoile dining room and this is amazing. Thanks, man. It's, I'm happy to have you guys here. This is like a culmination of everything that we do every week. So it's really exciting to actually like see other people go through it and that walk through of like, we're going to the market, we're gonna buy food, we're gonna go back to Latoile, we're gonna cook it and some people are gonna eat it. And I'm really excited to see what these chefs came up with and like actually to show the audience like what, what that aspect of it's like because that's what we go through every week. So, When you are faced with something like this where you're actually analyzing and tasting, do you have specific things that you look for right away? My only criteria is that it's seasoned and balanced. Like that's always my thing. I love to get those textures being, you know, crispy, salty, sweet, sour, spicy. Like those are my faves, so. Okay. I'm excited to see what everyone, oh, everyone's style is so different. I'm just excited to try everything. Yeah. Okay, so I think our first, our first chef that's gonna bring their dish out is uh, Chef Lauren Monobano. Hi, chef. Hi. Hey, how are you? I'm doing really good. It looks so good. Oh, this is beautiful. It looks exactly what I thought like this dish would look like coming from everything you had in those bags. <laughs> and also my bouquet of flowers exactly. that I drew my inspiration from. Exactly. <laughs> 
So Lauren, uh, talk us through, what do we have in front of us? So on the bottom there, we've got like a creamy baba ganoush almost, with those Thai eggplants, homemade tahini, a little bit of lemon juice, and then we have all of these different vegetables coming together. The different brassicas, the roasty creaminess of the squash, the creaminess of the beans that were done just right, hopefully, and just sort of some fun crunch with the radish on top. Excellent, thank you so much. Thank yeah, you, enjoy. can't wait. Yeah, I mean, it, it's often said that you eat with your eyes first, and this is vibrant. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it, it smells delicious. It looks amazing. I like that there's a bunch of different textural things happening, even visually, so I'm excited to see what happens. Excellent. Well, here we go. First bite. The vegetables are done nicely. Like, this is how I like it, when you have everything that's, like, cooked individually mm -hmm. and then brought together with a, with a really nice sauce. Talk to me about that baba ganoush. I mean, I really like the, the Thai, that she chose to use Thai eggplant. I was really worried mm -hmm. when I first saw them because I, I know how bitter they can be. But it's, it's a nice texture. It's a, to me, I think, I think she nailed that. The rest of the dish is also well balanced. I like the acid in it. And it's like well seasoned, which I love. Right. Next up, we have uh, Chef Gregory Leon uh, from Amalinda in Milwaukee. And I, I gotta say, like, Watching Chef put together his dish, I was just overwhelmed with the, like, the amount of zen, yeah. right? He's always more chill than you think. Like, I, I always have noticed that about him when he's setting up his dishes. I've only ever worked with him at events, so it's really cool to see him in, in action, but it's, he's just exactly the same. It's like, oh, I don't know, I'm just gonna make a thing and I'll put it on toast. <laughs> I'm excited to see what, what, what Chef's put together. Hey, gentlemen, how are you? <laughs> Great, how are you? Great, Chef. Yeah. Oh, it looks beautiful. That's gorgeous. Thank you. So what we have here today is a grilled multigrain sourdough bread. Then we made an aioli, and I added a mashed potato to that to give it a little bit more texture and density. A braised radicchio that's been cooked with sherry vinegar, olive oil, salt, and some sugar. Then we have different radishes. We have purple and green daikon, black Spanish, watermelon. We have some really nice apples that we got at the farmer's market. And then over it, we've shaved an aged goat's cheese. Excellent. Thank you, Chef. Excellent. Thank Enjoy. You, chef. Thank you. How do you approach a dish like this? I always tell people to pick everything up and eat it if I want them to, but I'm also like in Latoile's dining room, so I always understand like if we serve people a chicken wing, uh, someone a chicken wing in Latoile, they cut it with a knife and fork. <laughs> so I'm going to knife and fork it, but you know, I really love this presentation. I love tartines. I love things on toast. I'm super excited and, and really dig the fact they put potato in that, uh, that uh, aioli. That's an OG move. And I love that I can smell that cheese right off the bat. Right. I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a dainty bite first. Oh, good for you. You know, one on the end. Oh man. I'm gonna go straight Neanderthal on this thing and get mm. after it. It's toast. It's delicious. I love that the ground cherries are just like what they are. They add like such a uniqueness to that flavor. Talk to me about that apple. Mm. Really great use of acid and the natural textures of, of the vegetables and fruits. This rhubarb is just in here. Yeah. And using rhubarb as an acid, oh, it's such a good bite. Yeah. It's a really good <laughs> bite. Oh, that's exciting. But the, the thing that I like the most about this is, is the use of these vegetables and fruits as they're in their natural state. Because mm -hmm. they're so flavorful on their own, but like when you eat them together as part of a dish, it really balances out the whole thing. And that ground cherry, like that combination between the acid and the sweetness of the ground cherry and the richness of that aioli and the heartiness of that bread, mm. combined, combined with that little bit of a funk, you know, that you get from that, <laughs> that, that goat cheese. Yeah, mm. really delicious. All right, now it's time for the wild card, <laughs> right? I'm excited, and I don't know what to expect. I don't either, and that's kind of the best part. When he's like, yeah, my style is Korean and soul food, I was like, well, that, on paper, that's my, that's my language right there. <laughs> it's my, I'll, I'll, I was like, same. Yeah, exactly, that's my how jam. Have not, how have we not hung out before? <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I've, after watching him cut chilies for a very long time, I'm, I'm a little concerned, but I'm excited at the same time. Yeah. I get I that nervous anticipation. Right, exactly, and I think that that is a part of the dining experience sometimes, right? You're a little bit uneasy, unsure of what's gonna come out next. And I think with Tariq's dish here, because we know that there is sometimes a 
an understood difference between a home chef right. and a professional chef. And you see these access of, you know, people who have great creative ideas, but they don't necessarily execute them that well. That's kind of like a new chef thing. So I exactly. am, I'm over the moon. I'm excited he's here. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really impressed with the ingredients he chose. So we'll see what he's got. Oh man. Hey chef. Let me cook. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> chef for the day. Chef for the day. Tariq, what do we have here? Uh, basically it's a uh, dish. I use shrimp in the woods, mushrooms I got at the farmer's markets. Tori kind of introduced me to this mushroom I never had, mm -hmm. never cooked with. Uh, I decided to fry it um, in a dish and I was thinking like, what, can I, what do I like? It's kind of like this kind of sweet and sour sauce I wanted to have, but I bought a bunch of chilies, Thai peppers, Thai chilies, scotch bonnets, all types of chilies in there. And I made a sauce with ground cherries, the chilies, a little bit of vinegar and sugar, reduced that down and blended it to a sauce and coated the, uh, the uh, mushrooms with it. And then also added some sauteed, more chilies and onions in the mix. Oh good, more yeah. chilies. <laughs> Excellent. But yeah. are there any chilies <laughs> yeah, in it? exactly. <laughs> so well, I'm excited to see what you got for us, Chef. Well, Cook, Tariq. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right. Moment of truth is on. Is you ready to sweat? It smells delicious. It looks beautiful. Right? I'm excited that he fried mushrooms. I really love them yeah. that way. OK. Moment of truth. Yep. It's delicious. Not as hot as I thought it would be. No way. With being a big baby. I mean, it almost has elements of like <clears throat> the general toe chicken or, or you know, how yeah, it's... Yeah, that sweet, tangy, salty, yeah. spicy. You know what I love, like in the bowl context, you can smell the chili, mm -hmm. but then when you taste it, you get like the, the idea of it, but not the like, you're yeah. eating chilies. Really delicious. I love the Thai basil. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think the exciting part about this dish for me is taking a risk, mm -hmm. a humongous <laughs> risk. This, this is a product, the mushrooms are something he'd never used before. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of talked him through that a little bit at the market, you know, preparing him in a technique that he had never done before. Exactly. And, and putting it together on television, which is a whole nother level of stress, to make something that in is- In our kitchen. Yeah, it's super know. captivating. Yeah, I mean, I really dig it. I think that um, this is a very successful dish, mm -hmm. especially for, for someone that is like, you know, oh, I'm just gonna make a version. And that's very chefy to be like, oh, I was thinking sweet and sour. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna turn something into something that it isn't, but give people the idea of that thing. Yeah. I think that's great. It's, it shows that he's very thoughtful with his cooking. And, you know, I give him, I give him a lot of props for, for even being here, to be honest. It's hard not to um, just crush this thing, but I just got a huge bite of the, the Thai basil and it's just right? amazing. It's, it's a Amazing. totally different dish with yeah. that Thai basil. You eating chili? Are yeah. You eating I, I, chili? I was just what am eating... I not eating chili? Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> exactly. I mean, if Luke's eating chili, I got I got emotionally prepared to like eat a little bit of this. And it was it, a mistake. It... I made a mistake. <laughs> I, um, I, 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 I admit that I had a little bit of machismo got a hold of me. <laughs> and uh, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but thank you for pushing me to my limit. Yeah, there it is. It is actually really delicious though. Like when you go back in for the bite with that extra hop. Mm -hmm. Oh, another one? Oh, oh man. It I, carries I, it. You gotta go one to one. It balances it. it I mean, does. you get it's that really like delicious. deep, deep heat. But I feel like in the context of what I expected when I entered the dish and then, you know, being able to experience a little bit of that pain, it carries through so well. Mm. It's delicious. Super good. Mm -hmm. We have our work cut out for us. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be intense. I don't know. I. They're all so different. Mm -hmm. They're all very well done. Mm -hmm. I, I think that they were all really delicious. Um, I think to me, I kind of have one in front of the others um, only because of the utilization of all of the market ingredients and seasonality and as well as well-balanced flavors and a well-thought-out dish. Mm -hmm. So I, I think to me, like that, that going into it is usually my criteria of like, do I know what I'm eating? And does it taste like what it, what it is, but does it also transport me to something else? Sure. I think if we are on the same wavelength here, we probably have the same dish in mind. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And I think the thing that was so apparent for me in that dish is number one, it was executed amazingly. Like there just, there wasn't really uh, any shame in that game whatsoever. Right. But then as the dish progressed, I kept finding new textures and flavors that you didn't necessarily 
eat in combination with the first couple bites. Right. And then it just kept sending you to yes, that place over yeah, and over. Kept going. And I really, you know, I'm really impressed with all of them. Mm -hmm. And I, it was such a, a treat to be able to see their, like, their own styles come to the plate and be, be brought out. And, and to see the finished dishes, I, I'm, it's, it's like you get to know everyone, like, as people. And then when you see how they cook, it just kind of changes, like, how you know them. You, it's like you know them in a different way now. So. Completely. All right, so I'm gonna go back and get the chefs out of the kitchen right now, and then uh, we'll bring them out and uh, we'll reveal the winner. How's that sound? Sounds great. All right. Chefs, all that food was popping. There was not one sleeper of a dish that was like, eh, that's an easy discard. So honestly, thank you so much for what you uh, brought to the table. It's fantastic and it paints a wonderful portrait for the entire state of Wisconsin. How was this experience for you, Tariq? It's fun at the end of it. Like, I do get a high off of stress and anxiety at the end of a project. So it's a lot of stress, but now I feel good mm -hmm. that it didn't burn or taste like something you probably threw away right away. So I'm, I'm happy. That's, that was my goal. And not to make a fool of myself and keep this as as white <laughs> as I could. Yeah, that looks good. It yeah. looks like you know what you're doing. At home, it's different. I'm just like, whatever, it's everywhere, so. <laughs> awesome, well, thank you so much. Greg, how is this for you? It's fun. Yeah? Yeah, it's really enjoyable. It's always nice to come see somebody else's kitchen. Chef Tori was uh, very gracious and helpful. Um, and I think I've come up for a new dish for our menu this week, so. Awesome. It's a win-win situation. Yeah, that sounds like a win-win-win because I know from my perspective, we got to enjoy that dish too. And it was, it was playful, it was inventive, it was really, well, really delicious. You. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Chef Lauren, how was this experience for you? I work a lot by myself, and so it's really nice to have this like, fun, collaborative energy in the space, um, and get to feed off of one another, have some like banter, have some like a little chaos behind a restaurant line again, because I don't get that uh, anymore. And so I really enjoyed myself. It was good time. Excellent. Good time. Good times. Good, good times. times. I like the good times. <laughs> oh, with that being said, uh, let's go back out into the dining room and uh, we'll reveal the winner of the, uh, the cook-off, all right? Cool. Sounds like fun? All right, come on, here we go. Chefs, the moment of truth is upon us and I cannot stress enough, thank you so much. There was not one dish that stood out as being an easy castaway. This decision was really, really difficult and we had to deliberate about it for some time. You guys all did such a great job. I know uh, for you guys, especially coming from Milwaukee, not being at the Dane County Farmers Market all the time, you know, to represent all of the farmers out there, obviously Lauren, like, you know what you like to cook with and like you were able to get so many vegetables and fruits and of course those flowers uh, for your station. Uh, but for the guys, you know, like you really, not only showcase what, what was at the Dane County Farmer's Market, but what season it is, what, what the taste of this place is right now, and, and what's really, really growing uh, in Wisconsin. So really, really great job. But it can only be one favorite. Our favorite dish today came from Chef Greg. Oh, awesome. Thanks. <laughs> I felt like it was, it was really well balanced, and um, I really liked that you used a bunch of different raw vegetables and fruits in there and we're able to like showcase them for their natural flavors. It's just a really tasty dish. Chefs, again, thank you so much uh, for everything you brought to the table today. Um, I think Wisconsin's a better place for all of your efforts. If I haven't said it before, I'm gonna say it now forever forward because you are the ones pushing the flavors and farmers and food producers of this place forward. Everything was so good. Yay! Yay! Yeah, right. Flowers! Yeah. The dish was fire. Hey, good job. Um, where's my dick? Where is your dick? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Talk to Arthur. Thank you so oh, much, Tariq. Hi, I'm Eric Greiling. I'm the director of Friends of PBS Wisconsin. If you're like me, you're grateful that you weren't a home chef who was selected to participate in such a challenging contest in front of a television audience but I'm grateful somebody was, and I'm inspired to go home and cook with the freshest ingredients I can find and try something new. And this cookbook is a great guide for helping you out 
And it's one of our ways of saying thank you to you. If you show your support for Wisconsin Foodie, for PBS Wisconsin, for Wisconsin programming right now, we've got some great ways to say thank you that Amy is going to tell you about in just a minute. And we want to encourage you to show your support right now. You can do that by going to pbswisconsin.org or by dialing our number 1-800-236-3636. That's right. When you make the decision to support this and other wonderful programs on PBS Wisconsin, we are happy to thank you each and every time. So whatever level feels right to you is what you should give. If it's $10 per month as a sustainer, let us thank you with any one of these wonderful gifts. Of course, we have the PBS Wisconsin apron. We also have two really fantastic books, the Wisconsin Farms and Farmers Market Guide to take you all over the state on your culinary adventures, and From Asparagus to Zucchini, a really wonderful cookbook with lots of inspiration for using ingredients you may not be that familiar with. But all are available and so sourced locally because this book comes right out of Wisconsin. So if these items are um, singing to you and it's something that you'd like, give us a call and support us at $10 per month for any one of these or $15 per, per month for all of the gifts, every one of them in the package. Call at 1-800-236-3636. We're joined by Luke Zom, the host of Wisconsin Foodie. You guys work on Wisconsin Foodie all the time and you're all over the place. Tell us a little bit what goes on behind the scenes. What happens when you shut down for the night? Oh man, when we shut down for the night, I gotta say it's it's pretty low key. I think uh I think I had the perception before I started shooting Wisconsin Foodie that making television was easy. I gotta tell you, it's it's definitely one of the hardest jobs I've ever held. And at the end of the day, when the cameras go off, for our crew, it's really important for us to stay grounded and stay on place. So a lot of times you'll see us camping, uh, if it's in a farmer's pasture, or if it's at one of the wonderful state parks, or sometimes we do the hip camp thing. Like we're always finding ways to be together, to continue telling the stories, because quite honestly, when we go on a shoot, we have this tertiary story that we want to document. But then through the process of organic filmmaking, all these other storylines open up. And that's exactly what we want to make sure we capture. So it's always on. Keeping it organic all the time, um, lots of advanced planning, but also a lot of discovery. I think one of the ways you could help us with that is help us with our planning. Um, become a sustaining member. So take this opportunity to become a sustaining member of PBS Wisconsin. Being a sustaining member really just means that you are making an ongoing monthly pledge. It goes on until you ask us to stop, ask us to increase it, ask us to back off a little bit. It really helps us a great deal and it's easy for you. You know that your membership is always current. You know that you're always doing your part to continue to bring Wisconsin foodie to yourself, to your own household, to your community. Um, and it's right there for us. Um, so it's so easy, you can do that right on our website, pbswisconsin.org, or you can give us a call right now at 1-800-236-3636. That's right, becoming a sustainer is so easy. So if you haven't done it yet, this is a great time to call. If you're already a sustainer, we thank you. It's a wonderful way to give and it truly makes a difference. So today, these fantastic gifts, we have a little bit more time to talk about them and to show them to you. So at the $10 per month giving level as a sustainer, you can request as a thank you gift the Wisconsin Farms and Farmers Markets Guide. It's a wonderful, uh, really beautifully put together guide of farms all over our state and, and not just farms. There's other um, inspiring locations to check out and lots of beautiful beautiful uh, photographs in the book. Um, and then this fantastic cookbook that I am absolutely taking home tonight. I can't wait to get started. Um, and it's local. It's 420 recipes based um, on local uh, produce and submitted by local farmers and chefs. Uh, and then, of course, the apron, the PBS Wisconsin apron. So again, $10 per month as a sustainer, one of any of those gifts, and $15 per month as a sustainer, the entire package, when you call 1-800-236-3636. Thanks so much. Thanks to all our current members, and thanks to all of you who are calling now during this break. We appreciate your support so much. Uh, Luke, going to these farmers markets, going to farmers markets around the state like you do, what are some of the ingredients that the chefs surprised you with? What did they put in their baskets that caught you off guard? You know, 
I don't want to say like anything. I mean, this is going to sound so pretentious. Nothing really caught me off guard here, Eric. Uh, you know, most people. No, I, I think the thing that always gets me off guard, and the thing about creating food that is truly seasonal, that is truly local, if you think about your dish as, think about it as a painting. And what you want to do is you want to put together the best colors for that painting, but maybe you don't have an end product in mind. Maybe you're Michelangelo on your back painting the Sistine Chapel and you're kind of going off the rails. That's what these gifts can help you with, but quite frankly, that's what you want. You want something that's inspired. You want something that motivates you to put together a plate that's worth talking about and share the stories of the people around you. Now, for yourself, whether you're cooking for the cafe or you're cooking at home, is there a farmer's market ingredient you just can't wait for each season? Oh, man. Uh, farmer's market ingredient every season. I have to say tomato season um, is one of the highlights of my life. That first heirloom tomato or those first cherry tomatoes that you get that just explode that sugary sweetness in your mouth and you're taken back to every single tomato you've ever had in your entire life, or if you're like me and you grew up with a garden, every time you, your mom picked those tomatoes and put them out on the picnic table to ripen in the sun, that's where you go. If you're inspired by that, if the idea of tomatoes makes you anxious for summer and for growing and for cooking with the seasons, and you're enjoying this glimpse of that, please give us a call at 1-800-236-3636. Show your support. Show your support today. We'd love to keep talking about food with you. We'd love to keep bringing you Wisconsin Foodie, planning ahead, bringing you programs like Around the Farm Table, all of the Wisconsin content that we love to share with you, the glimpses of life, whether it's winter months, whether it's summer, whether it's fall, the best way you can do that is show your support by calling 1-800-236-3636. That's right, show your support by giving us a call or going online. And remember, not just these gifts that we've talked about, the books and the apron, but your Airwaves program guide to help you decide what you're gonna watch each and every day. Um, you can map that out for yourself and it's really an invaluable resource that we love to thank you with as a member. And then of course, Passport. So much uh, fantastic content for you to view on Passport um, at your leisure. So please remember that when you give, we want to thank you. We are so grateful for your support. You're what makes it all possible. So again, we have the Wisconsin Farms and Farmers Market Guide, the wonderful cookbook from asparagus to zucchini, and the really cute PBS Wisconsin apron as thank you gifts this evening. At whatever level uh, makes sense to you, $10 per month as a sustainer for each item, or $15 per month as a sustainer for the, all three items. Again, 1-800-236-3636, or you can go online, take a look at these items, and decide what works for you at pbswisconsin.org. For all the people out there who've seen the foodie van traveling around the state, or maybe even stopped the foodie van at some part in our travels around this amazing place, and shared with us the stories that they find so enriching, the stories that they want to see told, the stories that they want to see lifted up, this is the opportunity for all of you to get involved. Please check out pbswisconsin.org. Check out and call 1-800-236-3636. On the website, there's behind the scenes blogs that I write every single week that give you a little bit of the background of every story that we tell. And I have to tell you, I have to share, these stories are important. These are the stories of us. These are the stories that your kids will remember in the future. So please, get involved. Visit us at pbswisconsin.org or call us at 1-800-236-3636. Your gift today goes so much farther than today's broadcast. Like, like Luke was saying, there's so much content out there. Your gift helps support all of that content. Your gift also helps what's behind this show, which is a showcase of the local chefs, the local producers, the people who are out there innovating with their families, creating this network of food and organic producers and just joy of what it means to, to live here and celebrate being together and being in this state. And beyond that, 
we have programs and programming that just aren't visible on the air. Our education work, all of the things we do that are somewhat behind the scenes, but very, very impactful. Your gift today, your sustaining membership, all of that supports everything we do. We're so grateful for your support, and we encourage you to take this moment today at the end of this program to go ahead and show that support by logging on to pbswisconsin.org or giving us a call at 1-800-236-3636. You can call and receive uh, some wonderful thank you gifts, uh, but remember that you can pledge your support anytime. When you visit pbswisconsin.org, there's lots of opportunities to give at any level, uh, and so we encourage you to do that as well. So uh, for today, with this wonderful program, as we're wrapping up, we hope you enjoyed uh, hearing the results of this really fun competition and that you're inspired uh, to uh, explore your own culinary uh, explorations. So again, the Wisconsin Farms and Farmers Markets Guide, the From Asparagus to Zucchini uh, Cookbook, and then of course the PBS Wisconsin Apron. Any of these gifts are available to you when you pledge your support at 1-800-236-3636. So many great ways to say thank you if you make your gift of support today, whether you do that online or give us a call. You know another great way to say thank you? Is to say thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the opportunity, first and foremost, to be here today. Thank you, Amy, for saying asparagus to zucchini at least 30 times in this segment, no less. Thank you to everyone who makes these stories that we tell about Wisconsin so real, authentic, and true. Thank you to the chefs and food producers and farmers out there who are dispelling the myth that this is a culinary flyover zone. Let's let that lie die. But specifically, thank you, viewers, for getting involved, for picking up your phone or going on the web at pbswisconsin.org or calling us at 1-800-236-3636. Thanks very much, folks. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this very special episode of Wisconsin Foodie as a bonus to the season. And please make your call of support today. Thanks again. Let's have Victoria, you come in there a little bit closer. There you go. Yeah. Is this too close? How about this? Like this? Does this oh look good? God. Oh, yeah! Oh, oh God. God! Heart to heart, you like I that? that. <laughs> oh, Hi. <laughs> I've always wanted this, this date to happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, let's not make it weird. Okay. And no, let's make it weird. <laughs> I live in that space. <laughs> so we're in the... Uh, 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 Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters. The dairy farmers of Wisconsin are proud to underwrite Wisconsin Foodie and remind you that in Wisconsin, we dream in cheese. Just look for our badge. It's on everything we make. At Organic Valley, our cows make milk with just a few simple ingredients. Sun, soil, rain, and grass, and grass, and grass. Yeehaw! Organic Valley Grass Milk. Organic milk from 100% grass-fed cows. Employee-owned Nugler's Brewing Company has been brewing and bottling beer for their friends, only in Wisconsin, since 1993. Just a short drive from Madison, come visit Swiss Wisconsin and see where your beer's made. Wisconsin's great outdoors has something for everyone. Come for the adventure, stay for the memories. Go wild in Wisconsin. To build your adventure, visit dnr.wi.gov. With additional support coming from The Conscious Carnivore, from local animal sourcing to on-site, high-quality butchering and packaging, The Conscious Carnivore can ensure organically raised, grass-fed, and healthy meats through its small group of local farmers. The Conscious Carnivore. Know your farmer. Love your butcher. Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin is the largest local hunger relief organization in the state. With your help, we ensure your neighbors in need don't have to worry where their next meal may come from. Learn more at feedingamericawi.org. Additional support from the following underwriters. Also with the support of Friends of PBS Wisconsin. PBS Wisconsin depends on viewer support to provide the very best programs on television. Programs that educate, inspire, and entertain. 
Help us reach our financial goal during this membership drive by making your donation today. Thank you. I can live off of this. This can be it. On the next Wisconsin Foodie. I want uh, more people of color to see people of color farming. Then? In some parts of the state, local isn't defined by simply looking out your window. You gotta go out and look for it. Anytime money is spent here at this market, you are buying into a dream. I'm in heaven, honestly. This is that good. Wisconsin Foodie, next Thursday night, only on PBS Wisconsin.